Ah, the beautiful sights of Russia. I'm pretty sure that all of you guys know what Kami blocks are. The classic Soviet apartment buildings that are basically everywhere, not only in Russia, but also in Eastern Europe. It's kind of like a plague that encompasses all of these territories and even goes as far as Western Europe, for example, Germany. Well, I'm pretty sure everybody thinks that Kami blocks are a thing of the past, and countries like Russia, for example, actually got better at building public housing. Well, what if I told you guys that Russia did not only get worse in building public housing, but also a lot of the times people get literally scammed when when they buy an apartment in one of these uh, new awesome neighborhoods with new awesome buildings. And the last thing I mentioned is actually very personal for me in particular because I have a story, I have an anecdote because my dad actually got scammed like this. Hello Blazers, it is your boy Roman, your favorite neighborhood Russian and in today's video guys we're gonna be talking about the Russian real estate public housing scams going on all over the country and today we're just gonna be amazed and just marvel at the sheer gall of the people that are doing this. Now real quick, before today's video starts I would like to tell you guys about today's video sponsor. Raycon. If you guys don't know what Raycon is, it's an established brand that creates high quality wireless earbuds that are basically just as good as any wireless earbuds on the market, but they come at half the price. Their newest model, the E25 earbuds that I have right here, are pretty sick. Not only are the packaging and the earbuds themselves extremely compact, I don't know how well we can see them right now because of my luscious lux actually, but uh, they're pretty comfortable and pretty compact as well. The noise isolation on these is pretty sick and also they offer 6 hours of playtime, seamless bluetooth pairing and even more better. Thanks. So just in case if you guys want some epic earbuds like this for yourself, then go over to the link down in the description to the special offer I have for you. Go to buyraycon.com slash nfkrz and get 15% off of your order. I don't know, I've been using Raycon for a while now and they're pretty nice and actually they do not fall out of my ears, which is a very very big advantage. And I mean they're wireless earbuds, it's like the most convenient thing you can possibly get. So yeah guys, yet again, if you want to get yourself a pair of nice wireless earbuds that will not break your bank, then once again go over to buyraycon.com slash nfkrz and get 15% off of your order. Huge thanks to Raycon for sponsoring this video and let's get right into it. So what are we talking about? Um, you see the current situation in big Russian cities is like this. Most of the city is usually already built out of Soviet buildings. So you would have commie blocks, old Stalinist architecture, like more in the center. Usually that's the most like expensive apartments and stuff like that. And it's very often that regular Russian people cannot afford to buy an apartment in a building like that. This is where Novostroika comes in. Novostroika is is a type of building that is usually built somewhere around uh, the outskirts of the city in a new neighborhood and essentially what happens is that a certain company, a contractor, they either get the money from investors or from the government or both and what they do is that they take a particular land outside of the city somewhere on the outskirts of the city and they promise to build a new neighborhood in there full of great apartment buildings with great affordable flats and apartments as well as usually promising to provide all the infrastructure needed. Stores, schools, parks, kindergartens, etc. And the thing is that not only most of the time are these uh, new neighborhoods uh, absolutely awful, like even if the infrastructure is built, sometimes it's so terrible that like schools cave in on themselves and uh, collapse. There's been situations like that. Sometimes the buildings themselves are just awful, but most of the time the planning is just awful in itself. Like, I just find it so absurd that Russia, a country with like the biggest landmass in the world, builds uh, apartment buildings that are 20, 30 stories tall. But that's whatever. The big biggest problem is that what usually happens is uh, first of all the apartments in these buildings ends up being not so cheap and also they just don't build any infrastructure whatsoever and sometimes they just don't build the buildings whatsoever and uh, escape with your money and then you have to uh, spend years in courts trying to get your building finished. That's exactly what happened to my dad and we're gonna get into it. But before that I want to just show you guys what I mean. This is a video about a uh, one of these districts that I'm describing in Novosibirsk, one of the biggest cities of Russia. <laughs> коробки и не сделали больше ничего понимаешь да то есть там нет дорог нет дворов там вообще никто не это вот это в этом в этом прикол смотри вообще да не живут они они здесь сданы вот эти дома сданы они сказали видишь вот здесь уже люди живут I want you guys to understand. You might, you guys might look at this and you might say, this is a construction site. This are, these are buildings that are uh, not yet lived in. But no, these, this is the way they finish the buildings. This is not a construction site. This is a residential neighborhood. Yes. You see, this is the entrance to one of the stairs of the building. Beautiful. Do you guys want to live in a place like this? Cool, right? Yeah, I think it's pretty cool. What if so? 
These are buildings that were built two or three years ago. Tops. This is not like Soviet, some dystopian Soviet city. This is a suburbs of one of the biggest cities of Russia with buildings that were built recently. Ход в подъезд. Вот кто будет говорить, что это стройка идет. Ой, обращаю внимание, видите, там уже люди живут. Это сдан дом, и там уже заселены люди. Видите, человек заходит все домой. Дом заселен. Вот это вход в подъезд. Jesus man, it's a ghetto. It's a ghetto, dude. Дверь заварена. Dude, like what the hell? Это вместо лифтов они сделали. Yeah, there's no elevators. There's like no railing on the uh, stairs or anything. Look at this dystopia. There's no roads. You know what this looks like? <laughs> you know, like when in Half-Life 2 you're flat outside the map with no clip and there's like only buildings and there's like no actual roads or textures there or whatever. This is what this looks like. This is literally like this just buildings. There's no roads. There's no textures. It's all like a it's all a blur. That's the real city right there. This is just an out of bounds area right here. <laughs> this is GM construct is what it is. Jesus. Только что Сергей такой спрашивает, а как здесь ночью ходить? Здесь же нет фонарных столбов. Блин, здесь вообще ни хрена нету. <laughs> То есть они взяли просто в чистом поле, построили вот эти вот панельные коробки и все. Здесь реально нету дорог. То есть это все ну грунт. Везде строительный мусор. Здесь нету столбов, здесь нет тротуаров. Здесь вообще ничего нету. При том, что эти дома сданы. То есть они кажутся кого-то не сданы, но видите, здесь вот вещи на балконах стоят. То есть здесь уже живут люди. При том, что реально нет ни одного фонарного столба. First of all, these buildings are built terribly. You've seen what they look like. Like, like they're already, the paint is peeling and everything already. There are no lampposts, sidewalks or roads in the entire neighborhood. This is exactly what I was saying. This contractor, whoever he, the kind of demon he was, they, they just decided that they's, they're gonna build a bunch of houses and call it a neighborhood and they're not gonna provide anything. It's literally just a bunch of cardboard boxes placed in the middle of the field. That's what it is. Хочется понять логику людей, кто здесь покупает квартиры. Что им приплачивают за это, их заставляют, их под пытками, у них крадут документы и заставляют здесь купить квартиру. Что, вот, о, о чем человек думает, когда свои деньги, я понимаю, у тебя совсем нету денег, и ты просто арендуешь здесь квартиру от безысходности, и, ну, завтра отсюда уедешь. Но как можно вот добровольно здесь купить квартиру, я не понимаю. It's because people don't have money. This is the problem with Russia today, is that people are so desperate, a lot of people have I don't have money to buy a decent apartments, so they have to resort to these neighborhoods built in the bumfuck nowhere or in the suburbs of the cities where there's nothing. Ходим в комнату. Панели вижу. Плохо пропинены. Просто промазаны. Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> it looks like a war zone, but this is like a newly built apartment. I said I would not build any more, but I have never seen such low quality construction, such a poor house. There are children playing on the construction mussel. It's a nightmare. On many of the walls, I'm laughing at this, but this is awful. I feel so bad. Like this is the fucking hood, and the, the saddest thing is that, like, in 10 to 20 years, a lot of the people are gonna definitely move out of this uh, neighborhood because this is a neighborhood that's never gonna see any development, and it will turn into a literal ghetto. Like people are gonna be squatting in an apartment in this place there's gonna be like drug addicts everywhere this is the future of this neighborhood there is nothing else ahead of it yeah exactly. Качество было лучше, чем вот этого, потому что я ну, в Советском Союзе там людей зар... I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Из чего им строить жилье, но такого говна не строили. Dude. This is literally, there's nothing. There is nothing. It's just a construction waste and buildings. И его просто жалко. Он он ждет, когда какая-нибудь из проезжающих машин заберет его из этого ада. Ребенок не понимает, почему его родители сюда привезли. And you guys might say right now, Roman, you're surely nitpicking, you know, this is probably just one neighborhood like this. I'm not. First of all, I'm gonna show you more videos like this from this guy as well, but I've been to neighborhoods like this in my city. In my city right now, there's neighborhoods like that. Now, there's no uh, English subtitles in this video. Honestly, I can't be bothered to translate this one, but I think uh, the images will just speak for themselves. I mean, in this video, at least you have some sort of like lamp posts, I guess, but... Uh... <laughs> You know, I guess this is something that you could call um, the Russian Venice, uh, if you know, if that's the appropriate. Uh, yeah, guys, Russian roads uh, speaks for itself, I think. Uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ, man! Why? Why? I just don't understand. It pains me. This is my country, dude. What is this? 
And like, this is not even like, I'm not even looking at this, I'm like, oh my god, this is something I've never seen before. No, my city has plenty fucking places like this, dude. Plenty places like this, and my neighborhood sometimes look like this shit, okay? But when you look at it on video, you know, it's like, you just, it kind of, you kind of, you kind of puts everything into perspective, like, Jesus Christ, it's so bad. It, we're so fucked. And this is again what I've been saying. So this is again is a good example of uh, these panel houses they built once again. They built these huge towers in the middle of nowhere. There's nothing around them and it creates like, it creates new ghettos. That's basically what's going on here. This pains me because... Oh my god, oh my god, I've seen this shit so much, man. And they build a new nice houses like, yeah guys, this is a nice neighborhood. No, it's a shithole. These are slums. These are borderline slums, dude. And check out, guys, by the way, some uh, drone shots of the neighborhood. You guys want to live like this? No fucking, barely any sidewalks. Everything, everywhere is just parking, garages, massive ass buildings, barely anything for the people. It's gonna turn into a ghetto. That's what happens to these places. By the way, once again, guys, I'm reminding you that Russia is the country with the biggest landmass in the world. And yet we're building this, okay? This looks, this looks like Hong Kong, okay? But Russia isn't the size of Hong Kong. Why? This is not even something you would call a kami block. This is, I don't know, this is a Putin block, a, a Russia block. I have no idea, dude, whatever. Russia is still building kami blocks. Like, absolutely nothing has changed. It's still the same. But now they're pa painting in different colors trying to make it all fun and dandy. It's not fun. It's not cool. It's de still depressing and they're still... Look at the roads! But alright, that's whatever, okay? The neighborhoods suck ass, the, they're depressing, there's no roads, there's no infrastructure, whatever. Let's talk about how people actually get scammed on these. Here's the thing, when uh, neighborhoods, new neighborhoods in the suburbs like this are usually built, the buildings are uh, not only funded by investors and the government sometimes, but also the people sort of pay money uh, for the apartment before it's even built, if that makes sense. I don't know if this is like a practice that is also common in other countries. Basically, the idea is that you pay for your apartment in advance so for example i want to buy a one room apartment if it's still not built yet i can pay like a smaller price so it's going to be cheaper than if i paid for a new apartment or an old apartment somewhere in like more central location of the city and so once again people that do not have a lot of money but they want to buy an apartment very often they would put their money into one of these projects so they're basically like putting the money in for a future building to be built and in the normal scenario usually you know the company the contractor collects the money builds the building and gives the apartment to the people who paid for them but well sometimes it doesn't go as planned so here's what happened to my dad my dad bought an apartment just like this he paid for it before it was even built and this is not like some scam in, 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 in of itself it is a legal thing it is a common practice okay my dad paid for his apartment in advance I think this was back in 2014 as far as I remember and the building was supposed to be finished around the end of 2015 so he put his money in a pretty considerable sum I think around a million yeah he was happy like yeah I got a new apartment and stuff like like that but um what happened is that the contractor the company that was building the neighborhoods uh it went bankrupt apparently they uh, started too much uh, projects at the same time too much like uh they started building too much stuff at the same time and i guess they just ran out of money and they were like okay guys um we took all of your money but uh unfortunately we ran we ran out of it and we uh we cannot build the buildings that you paid for so uh fuck yourself and what happened is that the construction of the buildings basically just froze. So the building stood there like half built for ages. And what's funny is that actually I studied in a university which was kind of near that like neighborhood that was being built. And every day like I would drive by the half built apartments where my dad was supposed to live. Anyway, what happened is that this led to a uh, court, a dispute uh, in the court of law that literally was going on for years. And during all of this time, all of these people like hundreds if not thousands of people were basically left without money. They were not reimbursed and none of these people had a place to live i mean i'm sure they had a place to live but you know they just spent all their money and now they have to find another place to live you know what i mean it's annoying and so my dad together with all of the people that basically got ripped off uh filed a uh started a case against the company against the contractor and essentially what this led to is that i think like two years passed by and uh the government got another contractor another company to finish the buildings but here's here's a big problem which is like the most annoying thing i think not only did the building basically got built only three years later like i said it was originally promised for the building to be finished in 2015 but it was it was only finished around like early 2019 which is insane there's like a four year difference but that's not the only thing also the contractor that was finishing the building he said that he's not gonna finish it like uh properly the way it originally was disclosed so originally when my dad was buying his flats from the other contractor the idea was that uh, the building is gonna be built and the flat is gonna be furnished so you're gonna have like 
like, you know, a decent floor, decent wallpaper, you're gonna have a decent ceiling, you're gonna have, like, some basic furniture, like a kitchen or whatever, you know, stuff like that. Something in the toilets, whatever. But what happened is that uh, the new contractor that, you know, started building instead of the old one said that, yeah, we can finish the building, but unfortunately, um, the flats are no longer gonna be furnished. So essentially what my dad got in return is that he waited for three more years uh, than it was originally needed, and also he got a flat which is literally just a gray box. Like, I've been there, and it's literally just, uh, it's just concrete, you know, you walk in into a concrete gray room, that's what it is, there's nothing. It's like, in order to make it look like it was originally intended to be, you need to, you know, put in so much more money as well, and a lot of time, so, yeah, my dad not only basically waited for three years for nothing, but also, uh, he spent his money on a gray box, with a gray ceiling, gray walls, and gray floor, concrete everything, with no toilets, no kitchen, no nothing, no furnishing, nothing. It makes me so fucking mad, dude. And this is not even like a rare occurrence. This happens in Russia all the time. Like every single day, pretty much on the news and everywhere, they run stories about how like, again, like uh, 5,000 people got like ripped off by some contractor that either like stole someone, uh, stole everybody's money or got bankrupt or whatever. This is a big problem. I just wanted to make this video to just uh, kind of let you guys know about it because obviously I have no solution. Who the fuck am I, you know? But I just want you guys to realize that that, uh, you know, the coming block days in Russia are very much not over yet, and it's still pretty bad, and, uh, in fact, it's probably even worse than it was in the Soviet time, and I don't think they ripped people off like this. Yes, you did have to wait in a line for 20 years to get an apartment, but at least when you got one, you know, it was, it was this big thing. It wasn't like this when you got just ripped off and scammed at every corner. Thank you. Thank you, modern Russian capitalist. So yeah, guys, I guess that is going to be pretty much it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you guys did, please make sure to slap the like on this video. And also, if you guys want to support my channel, make sure to go over to the link down in the description to my Patreon, donate to it. I would gladly appreciate it. It helps me out a lot. And also, guys, if you want to support me, you can buy my YouTubes. The link is also down in the description. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.